Hey, how you doing? Good. I know. How you doing? You wanted to talk to me? For a few minutes. Okay. Just to put a thought in your mind and then you proceed from there. Okay. Whether you do anything with it, it's up to you. Um, let me ask you this first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, want, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same sheet of music. Are you wanting to talk to me about something that's totally separate from your case? Yeah, absolutely. It has nothing to do with my case. Okay, good. It has nothing to do with my case. Okay, I just want to make sure. Because if you yeah. did, if you want to talk to me about that, I just wanted to tell you that we probably should call your attorney. Well, I just got done with him. Okay. I mean, I just left. I've, I've been over there for two hours. With him, okay, for good. an hour or whatever. Okay. But, but to make a long story short, in which, you know, his, his words to me were, is that, um, you know, state, federal, local are all separate and all that. But, um, as you know, I've been around for about four years. Right. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like you, you got a thousand snitches on the street, I do too. Okay. I mean, that's just the nature of the business. Sure. Um, you know, you know in your mind what's going on out there. Okay. I mean, you know, a lot of it you know, a lot of it you can't prove. Sure. But you know, and eventually you'll get around to it. Right. You, you just, it's we hope. Like, well, it's, it's kind of like having a, a, a basket full of snakes, and every time one pops his head up, you reach up and you thump that little snake on the head, and he goes away, and you, you thump another snake on the head, and he goes away, and you, you thump another snake on the head, and he goes away. But you always got a basket full of snakes. Sure. Um, to make a long story short, um, in which I'm not going to get into the particulars of my case, but you know and I know that I have not harmed anybody. You know that and I know that. I'm not even asking you to agree or disagree. Okay. But the fact of the matter is, is if y'all were so inclined, in which, you know, it's it, it, Think of Fruit Loop running around town now. Rumor Control has it that like Fruit Loop, you know, he, he shot somebody here a while, you know, a while back. You know, got charged with assault or shot at somebody or whatever, just good. You know, he didn't even get charged. Uh -huh. You know, there's make a long story short, you got a boy over here for attempted murder that was shooting at Fruit Loop, shoot, Fruit Loop shooting back at him. Fruit Loop doesn't do any doesn't even come down here, you know what I'm saying? And I know why Fruit Loop doesn't come down here, because his mouth is like a loose faucet. I mean, you know, he, but there's several Fruit Loops. Which one are you talking he, about? He's a little light. He's got the Fruit Loop tattooed across his knuckles. No, uh, we've got two or three. Yeah, that's um, Spurlock's guy. That's it. Isn't it? Jeffrey Spurlock. Okay, yeah, that's the one I'm thinking about. Which is I'm thinking of another Fruit Loop also. Yeah, we've got several Fruit Loops. Okay, I, I know. That's why I was saying which one. He's got it on about. his neck. Fruit Loop across his. Yeah, neck. I think this is the, the Fruit Lock. I'm, fruit Loop I'm referring to, but okay. you know. Basically, you know, uh, rumor control, in which I wasn't there, I don't know, this uh -huh. is just rumor, but you know, I, I heard that he shot somebody or whatever a while back, years ago, or last year, or 10 years ago, or whatever, you know, uh -huh. and, and he got, and instead of, he got, you charged him to start with, with like an attempted murder, and then it ended up being an assault with a deadly weapon, have a nice day. Okay, was it the city's case? I don't know, I mean, okay. I really don't know, I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm pointing something out. Okay, I mean, go ahead. And what I'm getting at is, you know, as well as anybody else, that you can do pretty much what you want to do as long as the DA agrees with it. Uh -huh. And the DA can definitely do anything he wants to do. Uh -huh. uh, you know, he's, he does what he wants. But the fact of the matter is, if y'all were so inclined, I know of a bunch of stuff around town. I, and I'm not talking about a $20 bag of pot. Right. I'm talking about, uh, and, and I'm willing, and I'll even tell you this, I'm willing to take a polygraph with some of the things I'm going to tell you. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you some things in which I will not, and I repeat, I will not give you a name. I will give you instances, people, places, and things, but I won't tell you who it is unless we can reach an agreement on some things. I mean, you know, but, but you decide if it's interested, in, if you're interested in pursuing it. Okay. But I'm willing to take a polygraph to pass what I'm telling you. And I know that a polygraph is not admissible in court, and they should in court, but I know that you use them because it tells you whether the guy's lying or not. Sure, that's absolutely. The, that's the bottom line. If there's, any, if there's any deception on his part involved. Right. That's the bottom line. Now, of course, the jury, you know, they 
you know, they don't want to hear it. You know, but I'll take a voice stress, I'll take a polygraph, I don't give a shit. Okay. I know a, a situation where the man has 40 kilos of coke. That's what he does a month, 40 kilos. He deals both here and in Columbus. Now, he'll, he'll be a metro situation. Okay. I know of another situation. It's a 30 kilo minimum. We could walk up today and buy 30 kilos of coke if we had the cash. Flat out. Now, and, and, they, and both of these people live here? Uh, they're, the one of them lives over in Columbus. Okay. But that's where he lives. The other guy, I'm not real sure where he lives. I know of him and I know how to get to him. Okay. I mean, it won't be me going and making the buy. What I'll have, what I'll have to happen is, is I will have to, like, like I know you, I'll have to get you because you know him. Okay. And then me and you go buy from him or whatever. Okay. You know, if you don't want me making the buy, I go to, I'll get the wire yeah. the video okay. where you know I know what I'm talking about. Uh, and he's also, and this one that, that I'm talking about is the 30 kilos. He's up, he's up, I think he's in Atlanta is where I think he is. But he will take 100 pounds of reefer a week per, I mean, just boom, 100 pounds to clip, no problem. As much as you want. As much as you can bring to it. If you got 100 pounds, he'll take it. Okay. At $500 a pound, it's a $50,000 transaction just like that. Um, I know of another situation where fellas back and forth across the water. I think he lives here, and I think he also lives over in Columbus. But his situation is, is he can put together. There's, there's Richland. Uh, first off, let me make sure I, I'm following you. The guy in Atlanta not only sells coke, but he buys he marijuana. Sells, well, he sells marijuana and he can't get enough. Okay, so you we could reverse him is right, what you're saying. We could, right. we could sell him some marijuana right. at 500 a pound, right. minimum 100, 100 pounds. Absolutely. I see what you're saying. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, we could reverse dosing. Okay. That's what it amounts to. And the thing to do with him would be is to sell him a couple of hundred pound lots to get his confidence up where he's feeling real good about himself. And, and doing this, the person that I'm talking about using, you're going to love this because you've been under this son of a bitch for years. You've okay. Been, you've, and you've got him right now for a little Mickey Mouse, a little bit of nothing. You know, his ass is over there right now, as a matter of fact, and his ass is going upstate for just a little bit. But, okay. his, but his ass will be back. Okay. You've been after his ass since you were a small child. <laughs> I mean, okay. you know, I'm telling you, you, you know, when I tell you who he is, you, you, you'll feel your bridges. Okay. You get hard on it. But these are three separate people. None of them are related. You know, they're all three separate entities that are going. This third guy I'm talking about, he's not dealing in a large quantity per se, but he can put us on 40, 39 people, I think is what we counted up. Uh, we're talking about Phoenix City, Tuskegee, Eufaula, Auburn, Oklahoma. You're talking about Columbus, you're talking about Richland, wherever, that's over there, the other side of Columbus, somewhere down towards Carroll County or whatever. Right. Um, I mean, you're just talking about, and you know, what it is is a bunch of dope dealers, all of them. He's buying, the guy, this third guy is buying from the first guy that's the 40 kilos quantity. He's buying dope from him, but he wants to step up the plate and be a big boy. Okay. Is what he wants to do. He wants to be the bad guy in town. But he's got, I think we said 30, 39 people he's willing to put together. And we can get up close and personal. If we'll, do, if we'll sell him reefer at $500 a pound, we can get wiring video on every one of them jackasses. And, and there's a whole thought we could actually, instead of us having to go to them, we could actually get them to come to us. But it would take an investment in time, effort, and money on y'all's part. I mean, I'm talking about y'all gonna have to go and, and rent a building. We're gonna have to set up a quota business. You know, and I'll tell you what you're gonna have to do, but it's, it's nothing major, but it's, you're creating an illusion. Sure. And, and I'm not talking about just me standing there making the transaction, you're going to have to get somebody from outside of this county. I mean, you're going to have to get a DEA officer or somebody that, that is not local, that is not Columbus, that is not, I'm talking about somebody out of Atlanta or somebody out of Montgomery, get you two or three of those people who will have them standing in the door and patting them down as they come in to make the buy. Because I've already told them if they come see me to, to do anything, no weapons. You know, you, you get your ass patted down at the door, you do your transaction the whole nine yards. So to top it off, they are willing to bring people to us for five hundred dollars a pound. I, I mean, you could have—I don't know what a man gets charged with. Like if 
if you buy five, uh, a pound of marijuana from me, what do you get charged with? What if I buy yeah. a pound from you? Yeah, if you're just a guy on the street and I sell you one pound of marijuana, what would you be charged with? Well, you're still charged with the, um, you can be charged at a pound with the distribution right. because of that's, the weight. That's what I'm the, getting at. That's the reason I told him he's wanting, you know. Or possibly the, trafficking. Right. I figured, whatever. I figured distribution is what I figured. But. Possession, absolutely. Oh, without but, doubt. In the first, without doubt. You know, but depending yeah. on the weight, then that charge can be... Well, what we can do is we can bump the weight to where it's traffic in charge if that's what you want. If you want to yeah, it's got to be 2.2 pounds. All right, well, then we just need to make a kilo or more. I mean, what we'll do is, we just, if you're interested, we'll, we can bump the weight to whatever charge you want. But I'm telling you, I can give you 40 people locally between this jackass and then, like I said, he's went back across the water right now. That's where he's at right now, but he's back over here also. I mean, he's, you know, you know how it is right over the river. They just back and forth. They do what they do. But you're talking about that. Also, um, and I don't know how much of an ecstasy problem y'all got around here, but I can put you on the man that is supplying the entire Columbus. And I'm sure he's supplying over here. I was told 3,000 calves a month is what he's pumping over into Columbus. I can then take you, in which, and, and there again, this is going to take cash. I mean, we, and you, you're just going to, if, if this happens, somebody's going to have to put an electronic collar on me, put about 10 people in front of me and 10 people behind me, and keep me in sight and follow me. You know, I mean, he's, we're going to have to go to him like you're, the, like you're the guy I'm talking about. I'm going to have to go to you and say, okay, I want, you know, I've got $10,000, let's go buy some tax. And he's going to turn around, and we're going to get in the, in the vehicle, and we're going to go visit the guy that he's yeah. buying from. And that guy has a pill press. He's supplying. He's international. He is not. I mean, no bullshit. Well, he's getting his his raw material out of the Netherlands. He's bringing it here, and he owns a pill press. He is pressing his own pills. Okay. Um, also, um, I know of a situation in which I know y'all don't want to hear this. But you got some law enforcement around here that's doing some stuff, to make a long story short. And I can I can take you up close and personal, but he's not doing anything locally here on a local basis. He's involved away. Uh -huh. You know, he's in other states involved. And I can actually give give you or give the FBI, because that's what this will involve. This will involve the FBI and the DEA. I can give you specifics to where they can look up an FBI case number. They can look and see where a particular person was arrested that is that is can be tied to him. Mm -hmm. This person was caught with supposedly 180 pounds is what they were supposedly caught with. They were caught with 800 plants broken, okay? Which when they pulled them all up, washed them off, you know, and threw them with the roots in the bag, you know, right. 180 pounds. But these boys are not growing marijuana like you would like these idiots around here. Right. Like, these boys are high tech. Mm -hmm. These boys have been at it for 25 or 30 years. They've never been caught except right. this one time. And they didn't get caught. A grunt got caught. But I know who the Queen Bee is, so to speak, or the King of the Hill. I know. I do know who that is. I know that there's a judge involved, which is not a local judge. It's a judge elsewhere. Mm -hmm. There's 2,000 acres of land involved that they bought that five of them own. I know of the five. I know who the top dog is, and I know their name. I've never met them, but I know their name, and I know about where they're at. We can find them. I know a major, what I'd call a lieutenant. You know, he, he's he's main dog. You know, if he's not one of the five, he's the next dog in line. And I know one of the growers. I know three out of five, and I know there's seven people involved that I know of. Um, and, I, and they're also doing meth and code, but they're running that all of them down. They're running from California, they're running uh, Arkansas, and they're running here. I do know that they have brought meth and coke from California to Arkansas to here. Okay. I know that they brought marijuana from there, there to here. And as far as, <clears throat> and this is, like I said, this is a local law enforcement boy. But the, it's a local guy that's it, involved. He, he, he is on, he has a badge that has Russell Kent on it. And what I'm telling you, and that's the reason I'm sitting over here in a room without telling the whole freaking world. Because I'm going to tell you something, and I, I promise you this. I 
function. He's in our department. Well, I, I don't know what you consider your department, but he's he is law enforcement in this county. Though. All I'm going to tell you, he's, he's, you know, he's, he's what I consider sheriff's department. Okay. I mean, I don't know whether he's legally or not. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I don't know what the legal breakup. But I'm, but so I'm, you're saying he may be a reserve. Well, no, I, I know he's not a reserve. I know that. Somebody's got a badge and a gun and a uniform. I don't know that. Well, I mean, but reserves have a badge and a gun. Okay, well, I have more. But and when I say reserve, he, yeah. could, is he somebody maybe that's that is a volunteer no, reserve that no, we give no, a badge and a gun and a uniform no, that comes down and works no, with us, or no, you're saying he's no, full-time? No, he's, he, he's full-time, which, you know, but, but what I'm trying to tell you is okay. you can't, and I'm telling you, you cannot let that leave this freaking room other than going to Tommy with it. Okay. I'm telling you. He's, you know, and I'm but it's hard for me to, to say that to him. I know. Well, and I don't even have a name. Well, well, I mean, it's hard to go in there and go. Well, I'm going to put it to you like this. I know how much they all love Rick Cook. Oh, I hate the motherfucker. I'll bury the motherfucker. Listen to it. Look me in the eye. I will bury the motherfucker. I'm, he's, 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 I'm he's, just telling you. I, I know. Listen to what I'm telling you. Do you understand what I'm telling you? I will bury the motherfucker. And I'm going to tell you why I'm doing this. I'm going to tell you straight up. The day I got arrested, the son of a bitch went over to my house and exposed himself to my wife. My ex-wife dropped his drawers, baby. You need some of this. I, that don't surprise well. Me. I mean, well, I mean, I, you know, I'm gonna tell you, you know, I found out about this like on a moment's notice. I mean, I found out about what he's doing on a moment's notice. I, I've been out to his house <coughs> to go out there, and I've, you know, and I've seen his boys on the porch smoking their reefer. You know, they, they're all, all the boys are potheads, all of them. You know, them and their friends. I've seen him standing on his porch smoking a blunt. I thought, well, you know, they know my business. You know, he's law enforcement. And I, you know, and I ain't the police. I'm not. You know, I mean, you need, I've busted in houses getting people and there'd be cocaine sitting on the table. It's not my place to call. It's my place to get Joe Glow. I'm after Joe. Mm -hmm. I didn't see a damn thing because that's how I build my trust out in the street. You know that. That's what I can, I mean, I can go and find this out and that out and that out and that out. People, you know, people are going, oh, okay, because they know that my, my my lips are sealed. I ain't got a damn thing to say. But the reason I'm sitting here talking about this is, is like I said, they're, they're up here trying to put me up to shoot, and that's fine. If they want, if they don't want to deal with this, and they don't want to work something out, that's fine. Okay. You know, I'll, I'll go to trial, or win, lose, or draw, okay. and I'll go right up to shoot, and I'll sit right there, and I'll never say another freaking word. Okay. I mean, I mean, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, but but the other part of it is. If, if they want an ecstasy ring, like I say, then I'm telling you, it's international. If it, it's to have a pill press, them bitches are rolling. And like I say, I already know that one business is doing probably $10 million a year of an actual physical building and business. And I know that they got a building and a business over in Columbus that's probably doing $2 million a year. And there's no telling what this guy's got. But those are the two things I know of. I know that the guy that's running around here, that sells over in Columbus. He's got five people in Columbus that he sells to. That's, that's all he does. And which metros run up on him, they just ain't caught him at it. They, they don't know. They don't realize what they missed. Mm -hmm. You know, they ran up on a, on a little bit of marijuana that was somebody else's, you know, and they missed him by five minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, one of them deals. But, you know, to meet the guy, he's, he's a nice, clean-cut guy, just like me and you, and then which, you know, his words words, he doesn't, He's pretty much left it alone. He, you know, he, he, you know, he, he got put in jail for 30 days or 60 days and just scared the hell out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he's he's a typical guy that's never gotten in trouble, never had any problems, doesn't want any problems. You know, he's got some kids. He's got a, I think, a girlfriend or a wife. You know, he don't want. He's, he's talking, I'm, I'm just, I'm gonna quit that shit. I'm gonna quit that shit. You know, when he got locked up. But I guarantee you, we could walk down there with ten thousand dollars. Could have been the reason we'd have to have that much is because you got to get price on the tabs to be able to let him go and take the tabs and go sell to the five idiots that he's got. Because they're in turn selling to other people, but you could get the whole freaking bunch over there. And in the meantime, you could go to where he's buying them from, mm -hmm. and it'd take a little bit of work, but you could get the boy he's selling to. I mean, there's no doubt about it, because I, and I know he's also, there, I know they're supplying his land, because I know the name and the location of the business up there where they're working out of up there, so I know who that is. 
Um, but to make a long story short, I've got 15 things like that. Um, and if y'all want to work it, and which, like I say, I ain't asking, I, you know, I'm asking for a lot, but I'm not asking for a lot. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is if y'all <coughs> will sit down and pay attention, polygraph me on what I've got to talk about, <coughs> and when you know that I'm telling you the truth, right, when you know that, hey, there's no deception on my part, if we could work something out, where, you know, and I'm not saying I'm not going, I'm not saying don't go to jail. I'm, right. I'm not saying that either. What I'm saying is, is let me, and, you know, let my ass go on up to shoot a little bit, and, 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 I'm, and I'm going to tell you something, I need to go to jail for this to work. Because the other part of it is, is everybody's eyes are on Mike. Everybody's wondering what Mike's doing. So I got to, I, I mean, I'm going to tell you straight up, I almost got to get convicted to go to jail to come back right. and, be, and be in the loop, and I'm willing to do that. But I'm, but I'm also telling you that when I get, if I do this, if y'all will do the marijuana thing with the coke thing with these guys, if you will do it, if you will listen to what I'm trying to tell you and how I want to do it, I'm telling you, they're lining up like ducks. Because I've been working on this for a year ever since I got locked up, because I know every jackass in jail. I know every one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I do. I know every freaking one of them over there right now. You know, I, I went down to jail this one time. I had, there was 346 people in jail, and I personally had put 117 of them in there. You know, physically mm -hmm. picked them up and set them in there myself. So, you know, I know I'm like you. I know every swinging dick that walks, talks, and takes a leak. But if y'all would do these, this, this thing in Columbus and here with that guy, and like I say, I prefer to do it over here so y'all can get the credit, so y'all can get the glory, so y'all can toot your horn, stand on the bandwagon, and see what a great thing we did. I mean, you know what I'm saying. I mean, it's, it's, so because there is politics involved, and I know that. I know that. So let me make sure I'm clear. The things that you're talking about, like what you've told me, you've got at least 15. I've got 15 major things. Right, that's what I'm saying. Major Similar things. to the same caliber of what you just these, told me. These kind of things. Okay. No bullshit aside. And you're not, you're not saying that, that you're wanting the want DA's to. office, if they're interested, to just let you walk. You're just saying no. you, you obviously want some consideration at sentencing. Well, what, what I want, and, I mean, I, and I'll tell you what I want, and I don't care, I, mean, I, I really don't care because I know in my heart what I did or did not do. Okay. And I can, and I can live with myself. I, okay. I'm very upset. I'm very upset at somebody else. I mean, all that's fine. Um, but I, you know, I cry a little bit each day. Right. But I'm big enough, boy, I'm going to step up to the plate for whatever it is. Okay. But the fact of the matter is, if I can, I mean, I can hand you. Russell County, Lee County, Macon County, Barber County. What county of Dothan? In Houston. All right, yeah, I can do Russell County when, if we get done with this. And, and like I said, this is not a, and, and let me say this too, this is not a two week thing. Sure. When, when, we go, when we do this, this is a year at a minimum. I'm talking about go down here and run a building, two people with me at all. I, I mean, I'm telling you, I don't, I don't want to be alone. Mm -hmm. I want, I, I mean, uh, my thoughts are, and I've already got, I've got everybody involved thinking, they're just waiting on me to, to get done with this and, right. and hit the street. They're, they're foaming at the mouth. Right. Um, but they are, but if they do that, there will be hundreds of arrests. There won't be just one or two, and I'm not saying oh, that. I'm they won't be just here. They will be here, they will be Lee County, they will be Muskogee County, they will be Richland, they will be some in Atlanta. Uh, but I'm telling you, you'll clean the dope dealers up around. And you'll have them all on film and video because the dumbasses came to you and bought from us on camera and video in our building. And I'm going to dig you one better than that. We're going to know who they are before they buy from us. I already got that worked out. Oh, I mean, yeah, you'd have to do that. Well, I mean, I've already told them. I've already, I've already passed the word. I won't do any business with anyone. I mean, I'll tell you what I told them. I said I'll do business with you because they, because what's going on is, is, is Jimmy Brooks, of course, is spreading all kinds of rumors around the jail. Uh, you know, I 
heard some jackass say that I owned land in Mexico. That's the biggest bunch of bullshit I ever heard in my life. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, you know how it is. Rumors just abound. Right. So, of course, I've sat around and I said, well, hell, let's play it to the hill. If everybody thinks this, let's just build on it. So, basically, what I've told them is, is that, hey, I'm connected. I'm hooked up. Ain't no doubt about it. I can hook you up. Oh, no, we ain't talking about just local boys. I'm mob connected. I said, y'all do any business with me and my boys. I said, I can hook you up. You can do business with them. But you're going to have to do it their way. I mean, and I, and I just told them, I said, we deal out of a bank. I said, those boys have got an operation dealing out of a bank. You drive up to the drive-up window, you put your, you get an ID card if you want to do business with them. We run their name to make sure they're not a snitch. Quote, unquote, these idiots. They're idiots. I said, I can get in the day because they know I'd get in the Alabama and the Georgia stuff to see. So they, so they think that I can get in the DEA database to see if you're a snitch. So, yeah, let's build on that. I told them, I said, we'll give you a Sam's card. We can pitch it on it and an account number. And what we'll do is, is if you want to buy from me, you bring me a state-issued ID where I know exactly who you are. I don't want a criminal background. I mean, I won't have an SCI on you. DEA database on the line off here snitch because they think there's a national database for snitching. Mm -hmm. They're idiots. So, but whatever. But, but it, it works for us. It works for <laughs> us. So I told them, I said, as soon as you get approved, and I said, it's not me approving it because I knew I couldn't run an NCI. So, but if one of your guys was standing there, he could run one. He can run a background. But the whole point is, is to get that state issued ID to have dumbass sitting in that chair. You got him on tape and video while you're talking to him about the joining the Mac Daddy's club and you know for the marijuana and cocaine club. So you give him a, a card like a Sam's card. You take his picture, you get a camera just like y'all got over there. You take you know these cards y'all got with the ID on it. We get one of those, we take their picture, we give them an account number, we give them a card, a club card, and I'm with a strip on the back. They think they got something. We just got their picture. Mm -hmm. We got them on video. They're sitting in our office talking about how much coke they're going to buy, how much marijuana they're going to buy. Turn around, sell them a pound, two pounds, whatever. Whatever we want to bump it up to. They're, they're phoning them out for $500 a pound for pot. We do that, we turn around. And what I told them was, I said, look. I said, but that ain't the best part, boys. I said, you know how when you're dealing marijuana and coke and you get locked up, you business just goes to shit. And we go, I said, you don't know what you mean. I said, well, what if you had a way of keeping your money coming? Well, how? I said, well, listen to this boy. I said, I'll sell you this pound of marijuana for $500. I said, that's fine. And then you got a hell of a deal. I said, because, you know, it's going for $1,200 a pound over in Tuskegee. You know, it's dry over there. But they're paying thousand twelve hundred dollars I said, but what if I sold you five hundred dollars a pound? And I said, I know you got friends that smoke. Well, hell yeah. I said, well, think about this. What if you go get your friend that's dealing also, and he's your competitor? I might add. Well, hell yeah, he's my competitor. But what if you made money off of your competitor? Would you like that? He said, well, yeah, yeah, I'd like that. How are we gonna do that? I said, Just watch. For every pound I sell you, you go and find me five friends. Do a little multi-level marketing here. A little pyramid. You go get me five guys. We check them out. We let them. You tell them before they come over there. We check them out. We get in their ID. We sit them down in the chair, get their picture. We cut the microphone under the table, or whatever you know. Do, do the standard issue with them. And I turn around and I sell him, 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 and him a pound or two pounds or whatever our minimum requirement. It's the food in the jail. Bad food. But out of that five hundred dollars that I pay, that they pay me, guess what? You're getting some of it at the end of the month when I sit down, because we're going to track every cell. That's the reason for the card. I take your card and put you in the computer, and when they buy from me, I get their card and I swipe it through the machine. I'm doing is give me an account number off the back of it so I can document the sale at that time. There's no doubt I had his card 
that I made for him that I gave to him on film. And it's been run through the card scanner. He bought this much at this time and it's on film. There's no denying it. There it is. And then I'm going to turn around and credit your account in the computer with a commission for every pound that dumbass buys. And then when dumbass, he can go get five people. And when those five go get five, guess what? You make money off the second layer. You make it four layers deep. And you wouldn't believe they're lining up like ducks. I got over a hundred lined up right now. I mean, I mean, I'm just telling you, it's not... This is, you know, which that's my writing. And that's somebody else's writing for how many how many people and how many kilos they think they could sell just a Coke, just on what they could personally sell. But I got their fingerprints. <laughs> but I'm just telling you, we, if, if y'all were willing to work with it and run with it, send me up to shoot for a little bit, let my feet hit the ground, put me on probation, quote unquote, I'll come back to this town and I'll shut it down for you. I shut the whole freaking thing down I'm talking about. Like I say, no joke, in six to eight counties. Um, I thought about doing it over in Columbus, but I, I think we'll just do it here. Y'all can have all the guts, the blood, and the glory. And uh, let it rip. Well, I mean, you you're, you've obviously thought about it a lot. I have. put a lot of thought into it. Well, see, I, I've sat down for a year. I, the reason I hadn't said anything to you for a year, I mean, I've sat here for a year, and you know that. You know, I, I was going to say something to you the day that I was brought down here, but Mark Carter said, don't say nothing, so I didn't say nothing. I and, and, and I've sat here for a year with my mouth shut for the very reason of letting things just die down a little bit, just let everybody chill for 10 minutes and, then, and to where everybody's confidence over there. Because, of course, they're on that phone night and day over there, you know, and they write letters. I mean, they're like a mail drop over there. I mean, they're, they're getting four or five letters a day over there, some of them. You know, and, of course... The fact of the matter is, is, and this is the reason I'm telling you, you can't say anything to anybody but maybe Tommy to start with him. Because word amongst, I mean, y'all talk amongst yourselves. Right. And it's like in Rick's case. People talk to Rick, I'm telling you. I mean, Ray Wells is like a little smart well, I think he pretty much knows I don't want it. Well, <laughs> I, I know that. Well, I know, but I see it. Rick can't know that I'm down. Yeah, I don't get you know, you know, right. he, He's got and see the other part of it is I don't I don't know. Uh, it's like uh, what's that? I think what's his name? Daryl Daryl Powell. Mm -hmm. Is there Daryl Powell? Yeah. You know they're they're little butt buddies, and I'm not saying Daryl's doing anything. I'm not saying Rob's right. doing anything. Right. right. I'm not saying that. Right. I'm just saying mm -hmm. loose mouths right. sink ships. Right. And and I guarantee you that if one word I'm talking about one word gets back to Rick. There'll be a phone call made and they'll pack everything they got up. It'll all be hush, 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 quiet. Well, you, I mean, the first thing you said was exactly right. You know that I alone can't make that decision. I, I know that. I know. And, you know, I, I will certainly take what I've been told today in the contents being when I say contents, like just the little bit that I've been told, understanding that there's a lot. Yeah. Um, I, I will take that to um, the, you know, yeah. Tommy and KD. Yeah, yeah, I know it's got to go to Ken's the final decision, and I know that. And, and I know Ken, and I know Ken, and I'll see, so tell you this, I know Ken's got political considerations to consider, I know this. Right. Whether he's going to admit it or not. It, right. This is a political issue. This is not about Mike or not Mike. This is a political issue. That's what this is. A public political issue. And, I, and what I'm saying is, is if he if he will give me some consideration here to, to where we can plead this to something that's reasonable. I understand. And, and, I, and I'm not above, I mean the problem I got is like if I plead murder that's a 20 year sentence and I won't see daylight for I mean it's 20 to, 20 to life. Right. And I'll never get out to come do these things. Right, I see what you're saying. But what I'm getting at is if, if y'all will plead it, to, you know, if we can do something like a, like in Butch's case, if you, if you want to convict me of that, convict me of assault with a deadly weapon, convict me of whatever. I'm right, that's fine. 
you know, charge me twenty, twenty-five thousand dollar fine. I don't care. It ain't about the money. I really don't care about the money. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just don't. When all this is said and done, if we do this, I do have some personal items here I want. I mean, right. Y'all, when you went in my office, you took some emerald rings. Those are mine. I mean, they, they're not. I mean, they, there's nothing hokey pokey about them. I can show you where I bought the raw stones. I took the raw stones to the jeweler. That's the jeweler boxes are in. He mounted them for me. I paid him for them. They are mine. Right. I mean, there's, there's nothing hokey pokey about it. Uh, there's a, a gold ring that was in the safe that's got a gold coin in it. It's got some diamonds. That is mine. I can show you exactly where it came from. There's nothing hokey pokey about it. Um, there's a pocket knife that was taken as a U.S. Army World War II pocket knife. There's nothing hokey pokey about it. It's my stepson's granddaddy's pocket knife from World War II. I would like to have that bag. Um, well, I mean, other, other, certainly. I'm, I know. I'm just talk saying, about that. I'm just stuff. saying this. It's just that's minor. Yeah. You know, it's very very. But minor. I see what you're saying. But but I don't care about anything else. Um, and for me to do this, and 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 I'll even tell you this now, and, and you already know what I what I told Lee County. Uh, when when he told me what they had done and where they had done it at. I think I took them. I mean, I, you know, I, I sat right there and told him. I, I took them up there to a house. I believe it. I mean, you know, I don't know what they did. I wasn't there. I went up the road to get a bite to eat, get a drink. You know, I came back. They were standing there. You know, I, basically what I was told was is everybody was in a pissed off mood and they left. Right. But other than that, I mean, there's absolutely no involvement, no intent. The only the only thing I'm guilty of is giving the dumbasses a ride. Okay. And, and, and which I and you know and, and like I say we can do the same thing I can I can give them about 50 I can't give them what I'm giving you here but I can give them probably 50 a substantial like, amount oh it, and like I said I'm not talking about a dime bag I am not talking about a, a, a twenty dollar rock piss on all that yeah I, I mean I completely understand you know you're, you're you know you're spinning your wheels down here busting your ass chasing a twenty dollar rock. You know, you spend, I mean, you know what you spend. And it gets old. You know what you spend. You spend $5,000. You might even spend $10,000 chasing and prosecuting. And prosecuting. Well, like Boo Boo Gaucher, for instance. You've been chasing that dumbass for years. You know, you ain't ever really caught him for nothing. You know, I mean, you got him over there. I think, what is he? He's over there now for, what, an attempt or an assault or something? Yeah, something like that. And, you know, he had four attempted murders. I can get that on the table. I mean, I don't know if you can go back after it's been null promise, but guess what? He's over there laughing right now. Ain't nothing but a slap on the wrist. Ain't nothing but a slap on the wrist. His words last. He told me the other day, he says, as soon as he gets out, he's got two people he's going to go kill. I'm talking about laying them down and finish them. I'm talking about done. Those are his words, and I can get that on tape. But, you know, well, the, the issue is, is um, I was going to tell you something, Mr. Walbert. I mean, like I say, there's just so much. I mean, we could spend two weeks just talking. And, and eventually we'll we'll have to. I mean, I know. But I mean, the, I the, the yeah. bottom line is, is I'm, I want to be fair to you. I understand. In, in that, I you know, I, I, I'm just going to, I'm not going to ask to get into the details until right. Mr. Davis says, yes, we can or no, we can't. Right. And at the point he says, yes, we can, um, if that's his decision, then we're going to have to. Oh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. We'll, we'll sit down for, you know, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, weeks right. and, and go over everything. Right. But, I mean, until then, right, I think it's fair that you it keep is. it close to you. I will. And I have nothing to say, you know, in, in regards to exact things. Which, right. Which, what I will tell you is, if y'all if y'all will work this out, which, you know, i got to work something out. You know, we need to work something out with Lee County. Like I say, I don't, I don't mind pleading to the accessory or whatever. I mean, because like right. I said, I, I mean, I absolutely. I mean, they're running around looking for fingerprints. They're running around looking for this. They ain't gonna find it because I wasn't there. Right. I wasn't freaking there. Right. I drove the dumb ass up there because I got asked to take him to a friend's house. That's all I knew. And, and, if, and if that makes me a sorry son of a bitch, I reckon I am. Right. I understand. You know, but I, I can live with that. I regret what they did. I, be, I believe in my heart. I believe they did. I mean, seeing them, you know, I, I just, I just believe it. You know, I, mean, I can pass a polygraph. I don't know, but I do believe it. Right. And and, and my words would be is hang the motherfucker. I mean, I don't want him living in my neighborhood. I understand. But um, and you you also got some other things you're running around looking for. But um, I can put you on two property thefts, three cash thefts, 
two break-in and enterings, two conspiracy to commit murders. There's there's two other dumbasses. As soon as they hit the street, they ain't done it yet, but they're going to go and uh, go clean somebody out. What they're going to do? Their words were is their stack of money this big on the table and kilos and kilos and kilos of cocaine. You know, tons of you know. I mean, when I say tons, I'm talking about you know a basket full. Mm -hmm. You know, there's probably five or ten pounds of what they're probably talking about. But but he was talking about a stack of cash this high on the table, filling the table, um, in which that's out of state. They're going to drive and go do that. Um, yeah. I've got a got a situation I can put you on to somebody in which I can I can give you banks, account numbers, and people for a guy that's at least racketeering. Augur. Now he said, I, I believe, in my heart, I believe that's what he's doing. I can, I, there's nothing that I can give you that's, that's concrete. I can't look at you and say, I saw this. But I can give you uh, that, yeah, I know that he got $25,000 on this day in cash, and I know who gave it to him. I know that he got 100000 in cash on this day, and this is who gave it to him. I know that he received this money, and that he cashed that check on this day at that bank, and, mm -hmm. and it involves the banks both in this state and in Georgia, I mean, both places, and I'm sure in Atlanta too, you know, mm -hmm. he ranges all over, and, and, he, and I believe, and, and I don't know, you know, he, he actually puts this out, but he, you know, he's supposedly mob connected, and, and I believe it in a way, I believe his family is, I, don't, I think he's a pissant, is what I think he is. But I know of, I figured it up the other day, and there's a half a million dollars of money that I can think of, and I can prove part of it. But but what he did with it, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But but my words to you would be is is to look the money up, see that he got the money, and then see that he reported on his income taxes, because I guarantee you the dumbass don't. Mm -hmm. Because what he does is when he gets his IRS notices, his IRS has been on his ass for years. What he does is when he gets a letter from him, fuck them son of a bitch and throws it in the trash. He don't even open the mail. That's how much regard he's got. Um, but, but he make, does take trips to Bogota, Colombia. And, he, and uh, his words were, one day I asked him fine, and he said, well, I'm hunting rattlesnakes. He ain't hunting rattlesnakes in Bogota. Give me a break. You know, I'm stupid, but I ain't real stupid. You know, and I do know that he, that he uses coke. I do know that, because a bunch of little coke and meth heads are going to run with him. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, something else too. Um, got a guy that I can put on y'all, and he's he's here and across the water, you know. Um, and this guy, I've I've got his fingerprints. Uh, he's a co-signer on a bond. I, uh -huh. um, I don't have a lot of personal information on him. I may have a picture of him in the folder. I should have his fingerprints where he signed the the document. Uh, I should have a photo of the vehicle he's driving, and I do have tag numbers. And I already know that the tag numbers don't come back to that vehicle. The tag numbers come back to another vehicle that's of some people that he's related to. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what's happening is, is he's running around, but to make a long story short, he's a meth cooker, is what he is. Now, he, he's the, he goes and gets the um, products, and I, I assume he's cooking. I mean, he's too geeky, too... You know, he's too on edge not to be using to. Uh -huh. But the last time I saw him, his words were, is he had a 300-gallon bottle of anhydrous. Mm. I mean, so he's major. Um, he had to get his, he was working on getting his money man, and his money man's in Florida somewhere, and I got an idea, but I can't, I can't, you know, I can't look at him and say, you know, I know he's in Tallahassee. You know, I can't do that. I can tell you what I think and what I know, you know. But I do know that he told me that he had a 300-gallon 300, 300 tank, and it was in Dothan, and they found a uh, GPS transmitter on it. And he let it, you know, I don't know if he took the transmitter off and kept the bottle or if he just left the bottle. But evidently, DEA was on his ass. You know, I don't know if the GPS tracker goes on those bottles now or not, you know. You know, I, I don't really know, know coming from the factory. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I really don't know. You know, I know that you know, I know that they're using ether and anhydrous to do a lot of cooking these days. You know, they're blowing buildings up left and right. But to make a long story short, I don't know if it was where, like the factory or the, maybe the supply house, 
because you know I think now you even got to be licensed to buy the anhydrous. Uh -huh. I mean, it used to be you know you just went out and bought the anhydrous and put it on your corn, but because of what these dumbasses are doing with it now, uh, you know it's another issue. It's like those taggers they're putting in ammonium nitrate. It used to be you just went and bought 50 tons of ammonium nitrate and went and throw it on the corn. And now it's like, well, there's taggots in it, so they know what bomb it was used to make. But with 300 gallons of anhydrous, he has got to be major. He's driving a vehicle with Mexican plates on the front and Alabama plates on the back. Yeah. And his words to me was, he tried to get me to go to Mexico with him to bring a thousand pounds back. Because at the time, I was working him to get to the person that I, had, that I was looking for. Mm -hmm. You know, he was being really evasive about the bond, and it was a halfway reasonably good-sized bond. And of course, I was, a, I was meeting the person. So, uh, you know, I'm over there buddy and buying him lunch. You know, he's walking around and smacking at the lips. I'm buying him lunch, buying him a beer. Let's talk. You know, talk to me. <laughs> talk to me. But he, he, offered, he offered to pay me X number of bucks just to drive a truck back from the border down there, Texas or whatever, which I told him, hell no. <laughs> You know, in a nice, polite way, I told him, I can't get to it. You know, I didn't tell him, hell no. I said, you know, I just never got around to it. Always too busy. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if he brought a thousand pounds of pot back or not, but he can buy it down there for a hundred dollars a pound and thousand pound load. So evidently, he's he's involved. I mean, he's doing shit. Right. You know, um, got another guy while I'm thinking about it. Uh, oh, okay. And while I'm thinking about it, got some boys that are counterfeiting while I'm thinking about it. And I don't know who they are, but I do know who can go buy some money for us. They're selling it for 30 cents on the dollar. Rumor control has it that uh, they've got a room full. I mean, they've been print they printed a bunch before they ever passed the first dollar. Supposedly, and I've never seen any of it, I've never had any of it in my hand, I've never, you know, I've never had the privilege of having a piece of it to look at. But they say it's got the security strip, they say it's got the, the water model. That it's got the blue and the green on the ink, that it's got the micro printing. Uh, they're saying it's jam up, but they got fives, tens, twenties, fifties, and hundreds. So, but, and you can buy it for 30 cents on the dollar. So, you know, in, in which, you know, they locked him up for something else. You know, got him on a little pot charge or something. I knew about him, but it never, it just never crossed my mind. You know, I put two and two together because I I had called the city. I think it was the city I called about two years ago. Ricky Epps was running around printing a bunch of money, you know, a bunch of bad money. Mm -hmm. and, you know, he, <laughs> when he was going to when we were going over to Pat Weeks dice games and his cocaine parties, he was you know they they throw the dice and then the, the ink was washing off on the money. They whooped his ass. They took him out, throw him out in front door and whooped his ass. You know, for passing yeah. that money. But, but I called the city and put the city on that one. And, we'll, and oh, I know what I did. I didn't call the city. I called my buddy over here at uh, Sacred Service. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I called. I called him. What happened was I had some federal marshals come to me one day wanting. And I can't remember this guy's name, but they had a secret indictment on him out of Virginia. And I had just got him out, so of course I'm the next stop on the chain of of looking for him. And I said, Well, you know. Don't tell anybody I gave you the folder, but here's the folder, make copies, you know, we burned the copy. And I said, I really would appreciate it, let's get him and just throw him back in jail and then you snatch him up out of jail. And I said, nah. I said, y'all just take him and I'll explain it to the judge. Maybe the judge would be in a good mood. So they went right over and got him. But I had the guy's card. And I called him and I, took, I put the bug in his ear and I told him, I said, you know, pass it along. He says, now you know what you're saying, I'm gonna tell the secret service. I said, I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. Just go do it. And, you know, so, because I heard from that Ricky Epps was getting his ass whooped over the money, and then Moncello Epps, which is Ricky Epps' nephew, and that's a complete idiot. That's mm -hmm. a real piece of work. But he had, I had him on bond, and he had come down there one day running his mouth about it. I mean, it was like a, a faucet. It's like, you know, he's going to they want me to buy some. I said, you stupid son. Why would I want to buy any when I can earn some? Mm -hmm. You know, I think I'll just keep my money, you keep your money. But he's running around trying to pass money. That's what he's doing. But uh, that, um, and there's another guy I got out that, that's probably FTA on us by now. I'm sure he has. I know he had no intention of ever coming back. I 
found that out when I got to looking for him. But I found out he's not who he is. What he's doing, which when I got him out, I wasn't thinking, you know, I mean, it's two o'clock in the morning, I'm tired, been up for three days, I ain't had no sleep. I think I can get him out on a little while. It's possession of a forged instrument or a bad check or something, something small. Something very minor, I mean a bullshit charge, you know, what what I call a bullshit charge, you know, a couple of thousand dollars ain't no it ain't a crime. it ain't the end of the world. Well I found out what here yeah, it is the end of the world in his case. <laughs> the deal with him is is he's not who he says he is. The addresses and his ID, all of that is fake. The cousin that came and picked him up, state issued ID is fake. The vehicle they I've got I've got his fingerprints, I've got a picture of him and his co signer. A picture of the state issued ID that they used, a picture of the truck and a tag number and a phone number in Atlanta where they're supposedly coming in and out of this. I think it's, I don't think it's his mother's number. I was told it was his mother's number. That's not his mother's number. That's a contact. Mm -hmm. That's a contact number for what that is. You, you call up or leave a message, you get the back way. So I don't believe it's mama for a minute. Mm -hmm. But what he's doing is, and I didn't realize it at the time, because he, he had an accent and I didn't pay it any attention. I was thinking, you know, he said he was from somewhere else. I said, well, you know, whatever, that's cool. As long as I got a native to sign for it, and it's family, so here comes cousin, got all the proper ID. What he's doing is, is he's going to the Georgia State Patrol, paying somebody $250, setting, like, if I need an ID for you, I set you down in the chair. They take, they do the driver's license, and they have the driver's license, and the operator, $250. Have a nice day. You're now in the computer state issued ID. And it didn't dawn on me until I got locked up over here. You know, I bet you I know what them son bitches are doing. That son of a bitch is Muslim. He's a black, middle aged, you know, young, black. Mm -hmm. I, I bet you that's what them son of bitches are doing. I mean, I can't tell you. Right. But I mean, you know, when I, th I mean, like I say, the hair's I mean, when I thought about it, I mean, I mean, it's like, oh shit. That's what them son of bitches are doing. Like, so. There may be, there might be something major to him. I mean, it might be very, very minor. Right. But what they're doing is they were running around Atlanta at the time, cashing checks. They were printing checks, their own checks. I mean, you know, from scratch. And they, they'd always have a check for less than five hundred dollars, so it wasn't a felony. And they would go and cash the check. And I mean, this is what they did eight hours a day, all day long. You know, get in the car and here we go, and their payroll checks and what the hell. And he, he came down here to do it because he was wearing it. He was wearing Atlanta out. He came down here. Whoops! First one he tried, he got popped here. <laughs> you know, bad day. He said he ain't never coming back. <laughs> but he's been wearing them out in Georgia. You know. But uh, I guess well, I, I think. I mean, I think you've told me enough. To, I know. I'm just. I'm just trying to get you a, a clear. Understand, and, and like I said, when you talk again, tell him I know that he has political considerations. This is not about throwing shit in his face. Right. I understand. This is not about this. I've got all. I mean, you know, I, you know, I have my own opinion of him, just like you do, and everybody else. And I, and I have all the respect in the world for him for the situation he's in. But well, I will. But I also, he he really just doesn't know. And you know, like I say, well. Uh, and it's not things that, you know, I, I ain't been running around being stupid. It's things I just know about. And, I can, um, and, I will, and I'm not asking, um, like I say, when you talk to him, I'm not asking to um, just hit the street and have a nice day. What I'm saying is, is if, if he will drop this down some, make it to where, yeah, Mike goes to jail for a little bit. And, and, and I already know, and you already know, that Mike can, Mike can get convicted, Mike can get sent up the road, and the parole board can do a miraculous thing through the DA, through the general attorney's office. You know, Mike just made parole and the luck. You know, you know it, and I know it, and I'm not a, not above going up to shoot for a little bit because I, I need that for the respect of who's involved. But uh, once that's done, um, what I want out of this, once that's done, if it's done, if we do this, what I'm going to want in the end, I mean, the, the end result, what, what I want, I mean, this is, when I, when I do these guys, I mean, and I ain't talking about just these local guys, when I do this ecstasy ring, when I do those, 
with marijuana, meth, and cocaine traffickers that are, you know, California, Arizona, Texas, uh -huh. here, they're in Chicago. They're, I mean, these guys are national. They will, they are never, never going to stop looking for me. You already know that. My ass is, I'm a walking dead man. What I want is I want federal witness protection. And I will walk away from everybody I know and I care about. Do this. Okay. You know, uh, but, you know I, I don't know how the federal thing works, but what I would want. Well, it, it's it's not you know as complicated as everybody makes it out to be. I know. Mean, well, well, what I want out of it, if, if we do that, and I, and I want to be very clear about this, I mean, the absolute thing I want is I don't want my mother and father to know that I'm right that I'm out working undercover. I don't want my ex-wife to know we're divorced. She's not, you know, she's sending me money, making sure right. I got money on the books, but uh, she's fixing to get married. She's fixing to marry somebody else and off into the wild blue yonder they're going to go. Okay. What I want, and, and which my youngin is in the in the Alabama state system, which I don't think he's going to have a problem out of this. I okay. I, I think he can just stay where he's at and do his time. You know, they might kick him out to get to get him out of the system so he doesn't get a shank put in him. Right. You know, but, but let him deal with his own problems. I mean, he's, he is doing stupid stuff. He's right. Sitting, he's sitting right where I told him that he'd be if he did what he did. Right. So I'm, I'm not asking for anything really for him other than maybe get him out of where he's at so he don't get a shank up his ass. Uh -huh. If he goes back and does something stupid, lock his ass up. Right. But if we do this and we do the federal thing, I want, I want to die in a very public way. In other words, I want, I want a death certificate with my name on it that says I died over here while I was fishing or I was found in the lake floating. I mean, you know, I, I went and had a seizure. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I yeah. died. A death certificate to where a death certificate can be mailed to my mother and my father. A death certificate can be mailed to Catherine to where they can close, they can have some closure to where I'm deceased because I'm on the next plane to Tahoe. Yeah, I understand. I mean, you know what I'm saying. I'm going to need them to put me on an airplane and tuck me away somewhere. And, I, and I'm not asking for no check. I'm not asking for them to buy me a house. None of that shit. I'll make all Well, money. just um, hold tight here. Let me find somebody to walk you down and I'll sure, be back that's in cool. touch with you. That's cool. And hey, listen to me for a second. When you, when you get back in touch with me, I'm just nervous about it. I don't want you to lose my house. When you get back in touch with me, do not tell them about my house. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're gonna do that. God's sakes. Yeah, we're gonna do that. But I'm telling you, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying. Ain't no problem. All right.
Yeah, I love you.